reason, everything seems to be about the top. Start at the top, work your way to the top. Top of the morning to you. Well, at Button and Stamp, we like to turn things upside down. That's why we're here to look at bottoms. We're talking about the small, but oh so important bobbin that sits under the needle plate of your sewing machine. Join us as we talk about what the bobbin does and why it's so important. Let's look at how your machine uses the bobbin to sew a seam. Mm, it would be great if I had a large, simple model of this machine. Hey, Rainbow Unicorn, can you help a sewing teacher out? We've got our sewing machine needle here with the thread threaded through. You can see it's connected to the machine up here with the screw and use your imagination to imagine the rest of the giant machine. We've got our metal needle plate here and our two pieces of material ready to be sewn together. Down here is where the bobbin would be. I'll be playing the bobbin. Hmm, I'm gonna need someone to be the needle on this machine. Maybe I can find a volunteer. Can I get a member of the studio audience to help me out? You, sir, and the striped sweater. Come on up. Don't be shy. When you sew, the needle comes down and the bobbin loops the thread through here. Now the needle comes up and see, the two threads are looped together. After every stitch, the feed dogs pull the fabric forward and the process repeats again. And again. And again. Check it out. We've made the same seam as your sewing machine does. So now we'll learn how to wind and thread a bobbin. Grab a bobbin, not just any bobbin. Machines have bobbins of different sizes and shapes. I've got bobbins here for my three different machines. This one is metal, and this one is plastic, and this one is plastic too. But look, it's actually a bit taller than the bobbin next to it. And if you compare them in this direction, it's a bit narrower as well. So, always use the bobbins that come with your machine. If you need to buy more bobbins, look for ones labeled as being made especially for your machine. Or at least take one of your own bobbins along so you can compare sizes and shapes very carefully. Always start to wind your bobbin on an empty bobbin like this. A bobbin with multiple threads like this? I don't want to see that. When you're winding a bobbin, it's important to keep the tension even and for the thread to work back and forth so that the bobbin winds evenly. Now, just keep on winding and winding and winding and winding and winding and winding. What? There's a faster way to do this? Yes, there is, old man. You can wind your bobbin using your sewing machine. Every machine is different, but there are a couple main types of bobbin winders. I'll show you these and you can look up your machine's details using your user manual. The bobbin winder on this machine is typical for a modern machine. In fact, I've even got a little diagram I can follow. Put your thread on the thread pin and thread around this guide. Oops, the diagram shows the thread going around in the other direction. Wind the thread a few times around the bobbin, pop it on this bobbin winder pin and push it to the right. This engages the bobbin winding mechanism so when you push the foot pedal, the bobbin winds. At the same time, the bobbin winder has disengaged the needle so it doesn't move when I press my presser foot. Wind the bobbin until you have enough for your project. If you keep going, it will stop automatically once the thread is filled to this guide here. Once you're finished, push the pin with the bobbin back to the left. You're ready to thread your machine. Okay, we've got a second modern machine here. It's similar, but with a few differences that I'll show you for comparison. Go round the tension regulator for this machine in this direction. Wind the thread a couple times around the bobbin if you want, or I actually prefer to thread it through this little hole. Then I don't have to figure out which direction to wind the thread. Put it on the pin. This one has a little point sticking out and you have to turn the bobbin until the hole is clicked into it. Now push it to the right. On the last machine, the needle was automatically disengaged. But on this machine, you need to disengage it by hand before you start winding the bobbin. This hand wheel has a smaller wheel in the center. Hold the large wheel steady and turn the small wheel toward you to disengage it. And just start going. Your thread should spool evenly, but if for some reason it's not even, pulling mostly on the bottom or the top, you can guide the thread up or down a bit with your finger. Once you're done, clip the thread hanging out of the hole. Re-engage the needle mechanism by turning the small wheel away from you until it clicks. Now turn the large wheel toward you until the mechanism re-engages with the click. So we've looked at two modern machines, let's move on. 
Our last machine is a vintage one. First of all, disengage the needle mechanism by holding the hand wheel in place and turning the small inner wheel toward you. I put the thread on the pin and thread it through the center hole of this guide. A nifty tip I got from the user manual is that I can keep the rest of this machine threaded while I'm winding the bobbin. Then the thread goes down here. Wind the thread a few times around the bobbin so that you're winding toward yourself. Now, put it on this pin. Like the other machine, you have to turn it till it clicks into place. Press it back against the hand wheel. Normally, I would press the pedal, the hand wheel would turn toward me, and this little wheel here would go in this direction. Unfortunately, the machine isn't in working order, so you'll have to use your imagination. The bobbin will stop automatically once the thread presses up against this metal guide. Push back on the guide to disengage the bobbin winder. Hold the hand wheel and turn the small wheel away from you half a turn to re-engage the needle. We've wound our bobbins, so now it's time to thread the machine. There are two main ways that bobbins thread into machines. The first one I like to call the removable bobbin case. To get to the bobbin case, remove the front of the machine here and open the little door. Here's the case. It has a little horizontal handle. Grasp it and pull it toward you to take out the bobbin case. Oh, there's already a bobbin inside. That's a little spoiler so you know what you're going for. Now I can put the bobbin in, but here's the big question. Do I put the bobbin in so the thread goes clockwise or counterclockwise? The answer isn't the same for all machines. Of course you can look this up in your manual, but in this case the answer is right in front of your nose on your bobbin case. See this little slit here? Imagine it joining with the top edge to form an arrow. That arrow points in the direction that the thread hanging off your bobbin should be facing. Put the bobbin in and hook the thread around that slit. Now pull it over so it slides under this metal part. Once that's done, you can check your work. If you pull on the thread hanging off, the bobbin spins in the same direction as the arrow you imagined before. Now, hold your bobbin case so this large opening is facing up. It's the opening for your needle to come down into. Grasp the bobbin case by the horizontal handle and slide it into the machine. I usually jiggle the bobbin case a little to make sure it's really in. It shouldn't be free to spin or anything like that once you've got it in. Last thing, you need to get the thread up through the hole in this needle plate. To do this, hold onto your needle thread and turn the hand wheel toward you until the needle has gone down and come back up again. This pulls the bobbin thread up through that hole. Now just pull on that loop so the end will come out. I do it with a pen or scissors just because it's easier for me. The next way to thread a bobbin is the top loading bobbin. Open the little trap door in front of the needle plate to access this type of bobbin. We've got a diagram here, but in case you don't have one, look. There's also a slit in front, just like with the removable bobbin case. Imagine an arrow pointing the direction of the slit. Put the bobbin in so that the thread is hanging out in the direction of that arrow, then hook the thread around into the slit. Guide it back around between these two metal pieces. For the diagram, it really looks like you're going around a corner here, but actually the thread just sort of slips in. Now replace the trap door. The final step in threading your machine is pulling the bobbin thread up through the hole in your needle plate, just like you did on the last machine. So hold on to the needle thread with one hand and turn your hand wheel toward you until the needle's gone all the way down and all the way up, back up again. Then pull the loop of your bobbin thread out and you're done. If you're worried about your thread getting caught in that little trap door you've already closed, you can pull the thread up before you close the trap door. Well, that was it. We've covered bobbins from bottom to top. Want to keep learning to sew from the bottom up? Then subscribe to this channel. You can bet your bottom dollar we've got more videos coming soon. Want to see what I'm sewing now? I blog about my projects on our homepage, buttonandsnap.com. If you want to top up on sewing tips, but are under a time crunch, we're starting a series for you, 60 Second Sewing. You can see the first video here. If you have insightful opinions, thought-provoking questions, or gratifying compliments, leave them in the comments below. I thank you for them from the bottom of my heart. Happy sewing! And winding and winding and winding and winding and winding and winding and winding.